please welcome our amazing speaker, Mara Matozik. Mara is a product strategist and recovering co-founder. She is a legacy director of Women Who Code Mexico City. She was born in Croatia, raised in Mexico City, and is currently based in San Francisco. She speaks fluent product. Take it away, Mara. Hi, thanks, Stephanie, uh, for that warm welcome. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. I really appreciate you guys um, being here today. I am a firm believer that um, knowledge sharing is one of the building blocks of human civilization. Like, can you imagine the first cave person that said, hey, don't eat that plant because this other cave person ate it and they died. <laughs> um, so I really welcome the opportunity to share some of, of the insights that I have found um, with you. And I wanna thank you for being open uh, to, to listen to me today. Um, hi, Gracia. So I wanted to uh, to say that this insights that I'm sharing today are from the perspective of product management. And I am doing this because I don't think there is enough conversations going on about how can product teams uh, go into Web3. However, uh, I think the insights that I am sharing here today can be applied to any kind of company, not only uh, Web3 companies. Um, all right, so with that being said, let's dive in. Uh, I think Stephanie did a great job of introducing me, but I'll uh, I'll share a little bit more. So my name is uh, Mara, uh, or Mara. I am a product uh, strategist. I've worked for uh, big corporations, uh, startups, and eventually co-founded my own company and exited it. Um, uh, like she said, I'm San Francisco based, and I uh was raised in mexico and i was born in croatia there you have some pictures uh so that you can imagine all of this um and another thing about me is um after exiting my company i decided to move to san francisco and my husband and i um had a baby so i am a, a new ish mom and I, um, since I was born in a different country uh, than the one that I was raised in, I have always looked for belonging, right? I thought that was something that only I did, uh, but eventually learned that everyone in humanity is looking for belonging at some point. And I have found that through community. Like Stephanie said, I, I am a uh, legacy director of the Mexico City chapter. Um, of of women who code and community has always been very important to me and i have been drawn to web3 because of that you'll see that in just a minute um yeah uh one of my hobbies now is getting together with other moms and i am actually um uh, working on a product for that which is called strolls uh, if you're a mom you know how hard it is to get out the door uh, with your baby when you want to go out for a stroll and sometimes you want to go out for a stroll with someone else you know with a friend but you have a million things on your mind and the last thing that you want to do is schedule that stroll so i'm working on a on an app that'll permit you to just you know uh push a button and say hey i'm going out for a stroll who's with me you know come uh if you're kind of interested in that you know hit me up on twitter it's at maramatozik and we can talk about that or about web3 uh hopefully after this after this presentation today. All right, so enough about me. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, slide, which is just a quick overview of product management and what it is. A lot of people say product management is like being the mini CEO of the product. And there's conversations out there that say product management really started with uh, software and digital products. I don't believe that uh, to be true. I think uh, as just an example, we have Lee Iacocca, uh, who was a, a, a car executive back in the 60s through the 80s and 90s. Uh, he was a creator of the Ford Mustang, if uh, there's you know car uh, enthusiasts out there. But not only that, he actually uh, created agile manufacturing and um, Kanban systems, which I'm sure sounds familiar to all of us product managers and engineers. Uh, so I, I think product management has been there uh, longer than kind of web has been, but uh, web, 
one and two really define, especially web two, really define what product managers are or kind of coined the, 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 the word product manager, right? Uh, so we have people like Sundar Pichai, who is uh, started as a product manager uh, of innovation at Google, and he is now the CEO of Alphabet, that, who's Google's parent company, right? Um, and eventually, we saw those same product managers become founders in the like 2010s. Uh, and this is like a, a tendency that we see now, right? Since you're the mini CEO of a product, why not become, you know, a founder and a CEO of your own company? Um, and now we have, so if there is just one thing that you take from this uh, lightning talk today, I would love it to be that we are at an inflection point and it's full of opportunities to really reshape what our roles as product managers are, not only in Web3, but if you work for a Web2 company uh, as well, this is yeah that, that that's the like the key takeaway that i want you to go home with today there is a lot of opportunity to change how we're doing things um with that being said i would like to review also really quickly what is web3 for those of uh, of us uh, of you who are not as as familiar maybe with the term uh it really is just a term to reflect the evolution of the world wide web so Web one was when the World War Web really started. It's more, uh, it was more when, you know, static pages existed. So think Encyclopedia Britannica online. So this is very funny. I mean, if you don't know what Encyclopedia Britannica is, it's it was this kind of massive books of, of, of knowledge that uh, salespeople would come to your home knocking and selling. And it eventually, um, uh, the evolution of it was, uh, it eventually, was a CD, like an actual CD that you put into the computer. And eventually you could consult Encyclopedia Britannica online. So that was like web one, right? Web one is all about reading. Eventually we got into web two, which is reading and writing. So now instead of consulting the knowledge in Encyclopedia Britannica, you get Wikipedia where not only you can read, uh, but you can write, you can share knowledge, right, out there. And this um, created things like social networks, social media, podcasting, uh, blogging, etc. cetera. Um, and eventually, and this is where we're at now, we are in Web3, where not only can you read and write, but you can actually own the chunk uh, uh, of the web kind of that you're um interacting with so we have things like nfts DeFi, DAOs, etc uh and that has made product management a little bit different right than what we did before uh how so i'm proposing this three insights that i'm gonna share today with you uh there are many more and i would love to hear your thoughts on them um you know either here in the chat or Hit me up on Twitter, my DMs are open. Um, so the first one is road mapping in public. And we're gonna go into more detail um, into that in just a moment. But the second one is fluid user conversation. And the third one is the minimum lovable community. Uh, so those are the three insights. We're gonna go uh, into more into in depth. Um, the first one is road mapping in public. Road mapping is, like the day-to-day -day bread of uh, product management, right? It, what it means is, you know, having a plan of where the product is going to go or what features are you going to implement and when and uh, is this going to happen? Normally, what we have been doing up to this point, I mean, it's a private thing. It's a private document uh, that you have inside the company. It's for internal stakeholders. Uh, and it kind of gives you a competitive advantage over your competition, uh, right? You know, think about when Snapchat started with stories and eventually when it was public, other companies copied that. Um, so you kind of, you protect your roadmap in Web 2. Well, in Web 3, 
it's exactly the opposite. You roadmap in public. I know we have been familiar with this term of building in public for the couple for the past couple of years now, um, where you know people share what they are building on Twitter or on, or on, on other outlets, and then um, they kind of share the milestones, right? But up till now, companies and product managers didn't really share their roadmap. Like, what is next? What's the next milestone? And in Web3, this is something that practically every company does. Um, you know, I put just one example here, but you can find tons of other examples uh, if you're curious. So this company is called Stepin, and it is a, basically it's an app where you buy a uh, pair of shoes and uh, uh, in the form of an NFT, and then you walk in real life. And the more you walk or jog or, or run, the more um, your shoes are worth. Uh, so it's really interesting if you go into their website. This is the 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 um, uh, a screenshot of their roadmap. It's right there in their website. You can see. I mean, and it's now an app, of course. But they shared this even before this existed. Uh, so that kind of, you know, brought value to the product itself. Uh, which is the, the the NFT. I find this very, very interesting. Um, also, just because I'm a little bit of a data geek myself, I like if you go into Dune Analytics, uh, which are our analytics uh, for Web3 projects, you can find um, all this data on Stepin and on any other Web3 company, really. Um, and it will give you exactly the number of total users or the users in the last 24 hours. Uh, you can even build your own queries and share them there. Um, but like you as a person, not, not you don't have to be a product manager or a da data analyst in step in to do this uh, you know, in Web3. So I, I find that really exciting to be able to also see where this roadmap is and if they are, if you know, they're really hitting the milestones. Uh, so that is the first insight, road mapping in public. Now for the second one, it's a fluid user conversation. And what have we been doing up to this point in Web2? You have periodical user conversations, right? So you either, you know, big companies have their user research teams uh, or their data teams. Uh, some other have focus groups, uh, some other uh, teams, uh, base their, their decisions on the ratings or social media. I mean, you get the information where you can uh, at the end of the day, right? Um, but these are like really um, points in time, you know, where, where, where it's periodical. So what happens between this focus group and the next one, which is, I don't know, the next quarter, what happens in between there? Is, is is the person that you talk to in this focus group really happy about the decisions you made with the product? Um, you don't know that because in the next focus group, maybe that person is not going to be there. You know, uh, so what is happening in Web three is really interesting. And when I I'm calling this a fluid user conversation because when you think of fluid, you think of a wave, you think of water, right? It comes and goes, but it's always there. It's a constant. And this is what is happening in, in Web3. You can hear, you can read, you can see, you can interact all the time with your users. As product managers, sometimes it's easy to, you know, with all of your day-to-day -day, uh, responsibilities, it's easy to forget that the user needs to be at the center of our attention. Um, in Web3, that is not so easily forgotten. Um, I have an example here. Uh, this is taken from a Discord server uh, from the Robotus um, project. It's an NFT project. Um, and a conversation started about what merch there needed to be, right? So one person started it, and eventually more people started getting on it. And you can see here someone from the team replying to them you know, um, and getting excited about what kind of converse, uh, of, of, of merch would you like? Um, so having this opportunity to build while in the community, 
And having this really fluid user conversation is something I think we can really uh, take from, from, from Web3. And my third and final insight is the minimum uh, lovable community. You have heard about MVPs, right? Which is the minimum viable product. Um, so the minimum viable product is basically the simplest possible prototype uh, for your product. So it's a low fidelity um, uh, uh, product that will allow you to test your riskiest assumption. So for example, for DoorDash, they actually started uh, in, in Palo Alto and the universities uh, and they didn't launch the full product. They actually launched, I think it was a website where they pasted the, the photos of the menus of the restaurants around and um, yeah, and then they let you pay through there and they were the ones who did the driving themselves and just and call the restaurants to ask for the food and pick it up. So that would be the MVP, right? They tested the riskiest assumption uh, test, which was that people were, you know, going to be um, willing to pay uh, for someone to drive their food and were willing to do it online, you know, through through a, a website. Um, Eventually, they built what had to be the minimum lovable product. So the minimum lovable product, which is a term that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Amazon uh, coined, doesn't need to have all of the features that you have in your roadmap or in your backlog. But the ones that you launch with need to be perfect so that the user will you know, be in love with your product. How does this translate? to Web3. Web3 is very much based on community uh, for a lot of, 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 of the companies out there. So how can you take a minimum viable community and make it into a minimum lovable community? Uh, so taking this example of, of DoorDash and how they went from MVP to ML, MLP, um, I'd like to show you this example of Invisible College. Invisible College is a um, community. Uh, it's actually a, a learning DAO. A DAO is a decentralized uh, autonomous organization. And this is uh, for Web3 uh, curious people, right? So they launched it first on Twitter. They announced it on Twitter. And Twitter was their minimum viable community. Once they got traction there, uh, they launched the NFT, which served as a token to get you in the, the actual DAO, which is like hosted in a Discord server. Um, but this is kind of the same path, right? But now with communities, because community has become very important. And I think you can see here where my um, kind of curiosity for Web3 and, and my love of it um, has, has been. So um, that being the third, um, yeah, the third insight that I wanna share with you today. And, you know, I, I see I'm already, uh, the time on my end has ended, but, yeah, I just want to remind you, you know, the road mapping in public, think about that, about a fluid user conversation and about a minimum lovable community. Again, if you want to, um, yeah, uh, keep connecting. There's my Twitter handle and yeah, thanks again. Oh, hi, Shanna. Thanks again uh, for joining today.